Hey everyone, welcome to week three of the Podcast. Before we get started, I have a special treat for everyone. We have just wrapped filming for this week, and you may have remembered that last week I said that I would get a special hat for Golden Shovel Week. I unfortunately failed. There was no special hat, but to save the day, to save the joy, our wonderful pal Sarah Grant sent us something in the mail, a special treat for this week. Uh, and we received it. We got a knock on our door literally 20 minutes after we wrapped recording. So I wanted to uh, show it to you before we officially kick off this episode. Uh, the beautiful Sarah sent us some ceremonial golden shovels for Golden Shovel Week. They are fully functional. Um, maybe not for planting trees, but certainly for the purposes of poetry. So huge thank you to Sarah for sending us some golden shovels. Uh, I hope that if you are working on golden shovels this week that you had a fantastic experience. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for you to hear the rest of the podcast. So here we go. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to week three of the Napodcast, our special Naporimo themed loudcast segment of joy. I am joined this week by the swell and groovy Mr. Mark Galley. Ooh, well, like that. I am hello. joined by the fabulous ethereal and kick ass Beck Sherwood. Oh, I thought you were talking about Kev then. I am also joined by the fabulous, ethereal, and kick-ass Kevin McLean. Everyone give a big round of applause wherever you are, at home, in the park, walking your dog. No, hold on. I want a unique groceries. introduction. That's <laughs> yeah. bang out of order. They both got lovely compliments and I got Bex's cast-offs. That's not fair. I mean, I was going to call you a beautiful so little pumpkin of joy, but, you know, usually we save that for home. So <laughs> welcome oh! to the Loudcast. So this week we have been working on our golden shovels. What is a golden shovel, you ask? We'll get to that. So it's poetry. We're doing poetry. If you are watching this for the first time, welcome. We are a bunch of nutters who really like poems, except for sometimes we also really resent poems because we set ourselves nigh impossible challenges to write poems throughout April. This is, this is what is called National Poetry Writing Month for the uninitiated. Um, if you've been joining us for the first two episodes, welcome guys. Uh, we were writing concrete poetry before. It's Golden Shovel Week. We've still got <laughs> three more forms to go. What have we done to ourselves? Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to what everyone has to share this week. Uh, we're going to be sharing a bunch of new poems. We're going to be sharing poems from some people in the community who have been sharing their poems with us, which is super exciting. Uh, so yeah, let's kick off. Um, everyone, how, how have you been feeling? How's the writing going? General oh. mood. Bex, you, you doing okay? It's been, I, I came in very confident. As you all saw. Uh, this week has been particularly challenging. Uh, I did forget how life happens sometimes and affects what? things that you do. It's rude. So weird. Um, so yeah, I'm very glad to be done with the golden shovel. I really enjoyed writing the one I shared last week, but I really hated writing this one. <laughs> yeah, you did make it harder on yourself by writing two. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> It, that, that's actually surprisingly relevant to what I've written in my poem, Ooh. so do, we'll get to it. It's fine. All right. I'm very excited. I, I have not heard most of these pieces yet, so yeah, super psyched. Mark, how you feeling? I saw a little bit of existential angst earlier. Are you, are you hanging in? <laughs> so my experience with NaPoRimo this year has been an awful lot like, for anyone that you guys familiar with Takeshi's Castle, the old game <laughs> show? So for anyone that was, so there was the, the first the first event of Takeshi's Castle where you've all got to run and just make it through a bunch of doors. And some of them are real and some of them are fake. I started NaPoRimo with all the confidence of the leader of the pack, only to slam straight into a <laughs> real door. <laughs> if that ain't a metaphor for the creative there life. There you go. Oh. Wow. Dance. Kev, are you, uh, <laughs> yeah. are you doing any better? Uh, it was it was a week of two halves for me. Um, <laughs> so like I like Bex. I, this is 
It's because of lockdown. I hate lockdown. Uh, and so, like last year when we were doing Naparimo, if you're if you're a longtime follower of Loud Poets and I am Loud, uh, you might remember that I had a bit of a mare in the mid of Naparimo where my teeth decided to kill me, and uh, I, it was difficult to continue writing. So I'm very pleased that we're doing. Uh, like a week long Naparimo because it's been locked down and dentists will not help me. So I'm still in the same spot and I had a, a huge like tooth issue this week and I was boom out of commission for days. Um, and I sat and read a lot and thought a lot about what I wanted to do as my golden shovel. And then by the time like my teeth calmed down a bit and I was feeling a bit better, um, like I managed to, to get some writing done. So yeah, if, if this was daily, I would have been um, coming here with a lot of excuses and sadness and uh, getting ridiculed by you all. But because it's weekly, I actually managed to, to get something. So we could do halves. I've come out positive, but there was a big chunk of crippling pain in the middle. I, th I think the next time that we're doing a funding app and they ask, you know, what are the biggest barriers to success in your career? You should just put down teeth. <laughs> My teeth! <laughs> <laughs> Anyone is a dentist watching this podcast, uh, please, please help. Please let me register, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. It's a big problem. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for your golden shovel all about tooth pain. Um, that should be that should be fun. No, no, no. The tooth pain was my physical pain. Into the poem, I channeled my emotional pain, which oh, is a different allotment. Right. That's uh, that's deep. Yeah. That's deep. <laughs> wow. Like a poet. Uh, like, like poets. I'm I'm terrified for what's going to be in these poems now. So let's let's maybe ease into the poetry this week um, with someone who isn't us and is maybe having a better experience in Naparimo, <laughs> which isn't all about pain and dread and um, sadness. Fake doors. <laughs> <laughs> fake, the fake doors of despair. Um, what a lovely segue into the gem. The beauty the incredible spirit and energy and fire of all of our lives georgia bartlett mcneil georgia if you don't know her is a stalwart of the edinburgh spoken word scene she's just an incredible writer and has this amazing on-stage presence and power and on top of all of that she's just one of the most dedicated writers that i think we all know you know she every naparimo does the uh, poem every day program and she's done it this naparimo um she's posting up on instagram We've been sharing our work, so please do go follow us on Instagram. There are links down in the description to where to do that. Uh, but yeah, we wanted to start off this episode by sharing one of George's poems and, and really highlighting the fact that um, it isn't just the four of us weirdos doing Naparimo. <laughs> it really is a, a fantastic global community and one of the best parts There's of it. Loads is of There's loads of weirdos. There's loads of weirdos. Hey! It's about finding your tribe, you know. Uh, so yeah, so... Yeah, we, we, we thought, who is most like Georgia? Who, who has Georgia's spirit inside their soul and could read Georgia's poem? And uh, Mark Galley, could you, uh, <laughs> could you channel Georgia for us? I, I, will, I, will, do my, I will do my best. Um, it is, bring uh, the juggernaut. I, I, will try, I will do my best to bring the juggernaut. There is but one juggernaut. Um, so I'm, I'm, I feel very honored to be reading Georgia's uh, poem uh first and foremost uh, i will apologize if this is not how uh they envisioned it in their head um, but i'm sure they will correct me <laughs> uh, i don't uh, i don't does this one did it have a title when it came with it uh, the winding road the winding road so georgia Bartlett mcneil the winding road it's quiet as we drive along the winding road the radio plays a dripping tap against my ears I am too in tune with the silence. The wheels are smooth against the asphalt like trailing fingers through silken scarf. I reach for your hand, only to find it glued to the steering wheel, unmoved for 20 years. You have always been so driven. My anxious hands find something to placate their need to hold fast and yet wander free, scarred thumbs wishing for solace. Ships looking for lighthouse and welcome harbor, a safe place to rest, a home to come back to when the tides turn on the knife edge. 
Georgia. Georgia. You continue to be awesome. I, I hope that was close, but I'm sure. Like, record it and send it to us if that's <laughs> yes, not how exactly, you envision exactly. it, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, do that. The, the line, uh, you were always so driven. It's one of my favorite things about poetry is, is, you know, the use of puns, but not in humorous ways, you know, and, and going, yeah, that, that is, I mean, you could consider that hilarious, but, but, you know, it, it just works so brilliantly as a metaphor. Kev, what, what did you think of George's poem? I mean, the, the thing I find really fascinating, like Mark's saying there, you know, does that in, match her thought of it in her head? Uh, you can really hear Georgia in that. And it's, it's a testament to the quality of her work that like, when I, when I put stuff on the page, people could read it in an incoherent manner from, from what I've intended, right? It wouldn't sound like me at all. But Georgia is such a disciplined writer as well as such a consummate performance poet that she she always blends those two so nicely that it is simple for someone to pick up her kind of work and, and, and capture that sound. I think Georgia is someone that writes beautifully about small moments. Mm -hmm. Like it's always the things that stand out to me in George's work and that that idea of like uh, a driving wheel 20, you know, hands on the 20 years and stuff is just like, it's those tiny moments of, it makes me terrified to be in George's head and how she sees the world because it's always <laughs> these quiet moments of consideration where you can see her in the space. Like you can see Georgia sitting in that car and considering those things and, and, and taking that situation on board. And it just, yeah, she's a very thoughtful and um, warmth a lot of warmth in georgia's work yeah oh well we miss you georgia we love you and thank you for sharing your work with us um and please everyone else if you are writing for naporimo whether you're doing our form-based program or if you're doing writing every day or heck if it's april and you wrote a poem please do share it with us um it's our favorite part of this month is getting to read everyone's work and i think particularly you know after a year of lockdown and it can be pretty stifling and pretty isolating. So um, it's really, really wonderful to be reminded of all of the brilliant creativity out there. Um, so yeah, so let's do more poems, How can people send them to us, Katie? If only we had an email address of some description. If oh, only. only. What a pity. Uh, yes, you can find um, our email, our contact on our website, uh, which is iamloud.co. It's just hello at iamloud.co. Please email us uh, lovely things. Um, don't email us things that aren't lovely. Why would you put it in people's heads? Well, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why indeed? Why indeed? Uh, so yes, moving on to golden shovels. Um, yeah, for anyone who has been doing this form this week, um, you already heard at the top some of the calamity that uh, these three were having to deal with. Uh, so again, we figured that we would start with a poem that isn't by one of us, that is a golden shovel from someone else in the community before we would share some of our own, some of our own work, just to ease us in, ease us in. Um, and yeah, this is an incredible piece that was submitted uh, from uh, one of uh, a, an amazing Scottish writer, uh, Bieg Horn, on Twitter to us, um, and she graciously gave us permission to share it. Um, so we're we're going to begin with that poem and a wee discussion of it before sort of breaking down how the forum works. But we wanted to give you guys an example to start out. Um, so Bex, would you mind reading out Bieg's poem? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have this golden shovel here. I don't know. I think the source was Evergreen by, do you remember? It's Barbara Streisand. Oh, is it? Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, big let's go. Let's do this. I'm sorry if we pronounced your name wrong. Right. Maybe I do not want to talk about my love or tell you how soft is the skin of his inner arm, soft as silky sheets wrapped around an inseparable pair of lovers. No. It would be too easy to tell you what went on that night on the chair next to the uncurtained window and how love slowly rose in us and whipped itself up to a fresh strawberry milkshake, leaving a telltale moustache as a souvenir. So do not ask me about the way he likes to kiss my forehead in the morning. Some things are better left breathless and silent on the air. Wow. wow. It's so nice. It's so nice. I feel weird reading it because it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> what a gorgeous piece though. What a, it's interesting as well reading that after Georgia's and how they both use the, the texture of silk 
Um, it, it's quite funny how the the sort of imagery of those poems rhymes with each other as totally disconnected as they are. Mark, what did you think of, of Big's poem? Oh, I, I really, really liked it. It emphasized something that I realized what wouldn't have actually helped me, but I hadn't thought about using like a like a song or something that wasn't mm. a poem for the for the start. Um so that's that's both frustrating that I didn't think of that. <laughs> um and I also it's it, it's one of those it's I really I, I really love sort of like the the way it's written. I think after doing this it's even more impressive doing to those poems. I wish we had waited to do that until after at least mine so it wouldn't have to follow it. Um, <laughs> but yeah I, 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 a, a truly beautiful beautiful piece and one that makes me yeah, a little bit, a little bit jealous and annoyed in the best way. <laughs> I think you can see, uh, so I, I don't know a huge amount about uh, Big's back background, but like you can see the quality in her writing. And Golden Shovel, I think, leans into poets who are good structural writers. You can see she has a real good understanding of like enjambment and and like mm -hmm. the flow of her punctuation and stuff like through it to to assist the shovel rather than to force it you know what i mean there's a couple lines there where where it does drop but it feels much smoother than i have done <laughs> so you can see the you can see the the quality on the page which is cool i think that's mm -hmm. what annoyed me a bit more like the, the, not annoyed me in the actual way and that, that it feels so smooth and it's so like yeah. it flows so nicely and i think because that's one of the biggest problems i had that emphasizes that maybe they had that problem as well but it hasn't ended with that but i wonder if it's because performance poets like i know I think Gally and I, weirdly, because I think Bex would probably be considered the most performancey, but Bex's writing style's changed a lot since people saw her live. And I think Bex has become much more interested in form and structure and like page esque poetry, if that's still a thing. Um, but like, I think Mark and I, we're very rooted when it comes to our writing in like flow. Like, I want everything to sound a certain way. And so then when I hit a line and I'm like, well, that's not the rhyme I want, I would normally change the word and you can't. Whereas you can see in that kind of like more page poetry style that it's someone going, oh no, this is fine. I know how to use <laughs> the system and change the line and stuff that I, yeah, I, I, we don't have, but. I know this is going to sound really crazy, but I find it quite hard to like end poems. So I get really envious if like the final line has like that satisfying after, you know, that little like moment afterwards where the poet end, the poem ends and everyone just goes, hmm, mm. just like, like you've satisfied, or you're sated after eating food or something. It's just that same feeling. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's very nice. <laughs> there was um I, I was performing at boomerang club last night and shout out to the guys at boomerang um for just putting on amazing events and and being part of a, a great community but um pj the repeat beat poet who we uh absolutely love to bits we featured on the loudcast i will put a link to his episode below it's brilliant um but he described that that sound of appreciation as like a cow mooing after a delicious meal and it's like <sighs> such a horrible but apt image. The poetry, mm. <laughs> always comes back to cows. I was just, it all <laughs> comes back to cows. So yeah, let's talk golden shovels because we, we've already started briefly talking about them a little bit, but we, in case you haven't heard of them, uh, we should explain more fully what they are. So uh, yeah, a golden shovel, do, does anyone, Kev, do you wanna, do you wanna give us the, the definition here? Sure, no problem. Written one, know all about it. Uh, basically, you have to choose a source text uh, and each word of that source text becomes the end word of a line of a new poem. Um, yeah, that's pretty basic. Yeah, that's, pretty yeah. That's, that's correct. That is a, a, a star golden shoveling. Um, so, so yeah, I, I very we already... specifically use the term text as well, because it's, it's galley that's behind the curve here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't have helped. I will explain why it wouldn't have helped later on. But, uh... <laughs> well, well, Mark, because, because you were scared of following, um, yeah, of going first here, do you want to, yeah, Go say first. a little bit more <laughs> about, about that text uh, about, 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 about my chosen? About my golden shovel, yeah, no, yeah. that's that's probably fair. I think it's good to probably start with this one. And I know I'm I do start. I'm normally quite down on my poems, but um, I, this one had sort of like particular challenges and stuff for me. So I guess that so the um, I'll explain the so the reason that realizing a song 
I changing the um, you know, it could have been a song or it could have been something else, wouldn't it helped? Mm -hmm is because I pay, I made potentially the mistake of I picked my source poem right from the start and went, that's what I'm going to use. And that's where I was like, that was like the one thing I was really rigid with. Mm. Um, and so the poem I've, I've used is it's my favorite poem. This is why I was so rigid on it, um, is Josh Overton's Halfway Man, which I thought when I was, you know, when we were doing Return to Form season one and sort of I learned, was learning more about that form, I remember thinking, I went, Yep, that would probably make an awesome golden shovel. So <clears throat> it's quite short because um, I'm aware of the, the lines I've used. I haven't used the full complete stanza. 12 weeks weary brought me here, standing tall for eyes red, late night shopping with you. And the most, in my head, that just continues in my brain. I can keep going with that whole poem. I love it so much. Um, and I also think part of the thing that got me with this was having almost like too much love for that poem. <laughs> Um, we we so should probably mention, sorry to interrupt, yeah. Mark, we, we have a gorgeous video mm -hmm. of Halfway Man, which we will um, link uh, for everyone to watch. It's stunning. So definitely check that a out. A lot sorry, of the views on it are going to be me as well. I, I love that video <laughs> in particular as well. Um, and yeah, so I was like, I was so set on wanting to use this one bit uh, or this, this one poem because I love it so much. And then I kind of like ran into the stumbling blocks, like kind of like stuff like Kev was saying with like flow and things. And once I had the end words, I was like having to think about how to apply it. And I, so I watched the workshop uh, by, by Dr. <laughs> Katie Ailes. I was trying to think about the source, you know, like through the source poem and how to interact with it. Um, and I went through, and this is where I think it wouldn't have helped me, though it probably m might have led to a better poem of changing up the initial thing is this is the one I've ended up with, but there have been six completely different, like, variations. Not good, and all in various <laughs> states of, like, finished, as it were. Um, but yeah, I went through a bunch. With the title of Halfway Man, I went through, you know, I was like, the first thing I started with was I thought, so I was like, I'll try and be quite poignant, you know, like, halfway to man, you know, use the use of 12, where, like, the words then influence it. And then it got a bit... It got very personal. I didn't like it, so I went no and moved away, <laughs> and moved on. So I went well, okay. What about what about we could go with like half man? And I started with this weird night creature stalking, and there was there was various other things and various interpretations. And I was just like, no, I just I, I didn't stick with anything long enough. Um, and then I sort of landed on this one and this kind of idea. And I won't say what it is because I'm curious to see if it. If anyone can, fit, can make sense of it at the end, and then I'll explain. Um, but I got right. this one and went, right, this is the one. Just stick with it and get some, get something. You know, point in Apparime is they don't all have to be great. With this structure, we get more opportunity to, to edit and go over. Uh, but yeah, so here we go. Here is my, I was, well, this is called The Halfway Man, but... Um, uh, let's, let's move over here so I'm looking a bit more at people. <clears throat> the tired sight of twelve souls stand on the dark side. Some have waited weeks. Many more will wait longer, weary faces full of fury at the fates, twisted schemes that have brought them here to me, to the shadow ethereal, the cue to constant standing. As large drips of crystallized despair drop on the forsaken, their eyes meet mine and they see the empty red furnaces, endlessly desolate. This home of chaos to order, life to death, day to night, this border of crossing bereft of duty-free shopping, less where you came from and more what you come with. There, it takes many coins to make you. Here, it still costs one to end you. Oh, right. I, I have, I have a guess. Does anyone else have a? Nope. Is it right? Is it the the river sticks? The ferryman on the river sticks. It is indeed. Bonus points if you can if you know their name. Ch Char. It's not Charo. That's like an old wrestler, isn't it? Charo. Char <laughs> I don't. Um... I don't think it's Charo. Does it have a C in it? It's where it's really cool. Well, I'm I'm probably gonna butcher because it's a couple of it's like Karen or like Chiron I, or yeah, yeah Ka like, Charon. Or, Char or Charon, yeah. Like there is uh, Yeah, it's the same as Charo. Yeah, Charo sounds like same. a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it does. It's 
the place. Yeah, that was, so that's uh, the, amazing. Yeah, I got I got thinking about like I'd been watching some stuff on Netflix and that had been more like Greek mythology and then you know Helena Troy just came to my brain. <laughs> who's she? Uh, who's she? off? Oh, I don't I don't know. Um, if only someone <laughs> would do some sort of long form poetry that, about it that would tell the people like they seem like a really interesting person but I have no idea. Show but yeah, about I Helen was. Of Troy. I was looking at that and then that kind of got me on the idea of the halfway man, you know, like that ferryman between uh, life and death kind of thing. And uh, when I was going through as per the like per the workshop, looking through the source material, writing down stuff, one of the words that I wrote, I think was a, a comment you made about it initially when it first came out, Kev, was just like Josh Jordan, his like his bite and his like the like into it. And so that kind of made me, I didn't want to do light and fluffy because that's one, not me and two, didn't feel the thing. But uh, yeah, it went a bit more death and ain't capitalism bad because poor people couldn't even afford to die uh which i thought was so it was more in keeping with josh i think as a poet or at least the poet i when that poem was was written was more the influence than the words but yeah i felt the words i found it very difficult with the words because i love the piece so much to try and find the poem that i thought did this justice and i think that probably really in hindsight hindered me more than if i'd gone with you know like the revelation of using a song if i just picked a song i quite like with some good words i probably would have been relaxed and i wouldn't have felt so much like i have to make it amazing or they'll think i hate them like <laughs> it is so interesting that isn't it when because with the golden shovel you're inherently engaging with an author in some way you're inherently engaging with the person who has written a text and i know kev we talked about this a little bit during the week when you were writing this is something that you sort of struggled with in your creative process too right I really don't I, i'm not yeah i do like golden shovel by the end of it like i said it was a week or two halves i was i was happier than i was at the start but like i don't know i didn't I spent a lot of time reading, right? And like, I only know the poets I really enjoy. <laughs> like, I I am mostly into spoken word, so it immediately had its own difficulty because I know a lot of poems I would love to do, but then they're very long. And I was like, do I just do a verse? And then I was like, ah, I don't know where I go with that. And how do I even get the text of these poems? We're gonna have to sit and transcribe and all that jazz. So I kind of went to the poets I read and I very much don't read many poets. I, I, I read a lot of Seamus Heaney because he was the one poet I liked in high school. Um, and then weirdly, I read a lot of like, sort of black, the Harlem Renaissance poets, you know, black civil rights kind of poets, folks like that. So like, I, I really enjoy the poetry of people like Maya Angelou and like Langston Hughes. And I, I read a lot of Gwendolyn Brooks because, you know, Golden Shovel and all that. Um, and so like, I was going to do a Langston Hughes poem um, that's called dreams uh or dream there's dream dust and there's dream i can't remember but, but like i was i was maybe going to do that and then i just was like but i don't disagree <laughs> like i don't want to say anything about his poem <laughs> like it's not it's not a conversation poetry is a presentation of thought and it's not even necessarily like what you think or the entirety of you think or you know what i mean because I guess with Golden Shovel, it doesn't need to be antagonistic, right? It doesn't need to be like a, I disagree. Mm. Maybe it's a elaboration or an expansion. And it just, every time I did it, I was like, I don't, I just have nothing to say about this poem other than I like this poem. Mm. And it kind of, it grated mm -hmm. with me a bit. And so that's why I was like, I, I, I kind of had to switch it up. And it was advice from yourself, Katie, that was like, well, look at something else. And as soon as I took an author out of it, as soon as I didn't feel I was having like, a conversation I felt much better um yeah so I, I ended up picking a piece of text that I don't like very much um, and that also made it easier and because there's no author I could kind of say what I wanted about it and, and kind of go a bit more yeah it brought back the ability to say what I wanted to say rather than feeling like I'm being forced to say something you know for the sake of it mm. Right, before we dive into your piece, uh, yeah, Bex, did you have anything that you wanted to to say on Marx? Because I know we were chatting a little bit before about yeah. how took a very different approach to picking your source text. So. Yeah, I think the source text was quite a difficult, like, it's a difficult thing to select. And um, obviously with Mark, he chose like one of his favorite poems, if not his favorite poem of all time. And this is what Kev was saying as well. When you have a piece that you love so much, you really just want to see those words together. But with a golden shovel, you have to like split them really far apart. Uh, I tried songs, 
I tried poems. I tried uh, first lines of books that I really liked. I look at some of my D&D manuals. I tried to see if I was going to write something like about a monster. Mark is furious that he didn't think about it before. <laughs> Don't worry, Mark. There's too much technical li- that technical lingo. The armor class does not make for a very exciting poem. Okay, cool. cool. Um, Good to know. Good to know. But yeah, so I I totally uh, sympathize with the difficulty of pay- like I don't know whether Mark's way of doing it was right. I definitely don't think my way of doing it was right, which was just to keep reading stuff and keep seeing different stuff and keep looking at different stuff and hope that at some point one of these things would grasp me and I would be engaged and be able to write. But actually, really, I just had writer's block and looking at all of these sources was just making me more stressed, make me feel worse about the fact I hadn't started, that I hadn't got anything. So yeah. I mean, exactly. I love, really liked your poem, Mark. I think it's a really nice way to adapt the original source material into something else as per the original question. Here is your compliment. You're oh, welcome. You. Um, but yes, Kev, anyway, continue. <laughs> You're bang on, Bex. It's, it's so correct because I, once I figured out that like this wasn't working for me, like picking a poem wasn't working and I did it the way I normally do a poem, which is I had an idea for something I wanted to say on something I was thinking and then I found a piece to fit it rather yeah. than the other way around and I just don't think I'd really considered that for the shovel so like, I do get your I get the pressure mark but I think you've mm. absolutely lived up to it like I, I and I think I, you've done the best tactic that I could think of doing when I was looking at doing a poem I really liked which was make it thematically tied right like like that that thing of like you said class and you know there's there's the underlying tones of halfway man but it's not a reply it's not a critique it's not a response it's its own thing based off kind of like ideas and i I think that's the safest way to go really really good totally different genre as well i like that it was much more kind of horary mythy kind of like yeah spooky oh thanks very much guys but i'm keen to move on and we've set up kev's quite quite nicely I yeah. should guess what song this is. Mr. Does everyone McLean. have a guessing thing? Yeah. I mean, you, we can get it'll be very obvious. I, I should probably <laughs> spoil it first because I just want to say because it's a bit uh, topical. I mean, so Prince Philip died, uh, like uh, Philip Manbatten or Windsor, I don't know what he's name actually is they're very good at that. And <clears throat> he passed away, which is sad. I don't, you know, wish anyone's loved ones dead. I don't think that's a cool thing to do. Um but I'm not a huge fan of the monarchy. I'm a Republican. I, I, I don't think his position is a thing that should happen. And I think the, and I, I had a lot of feelings about like the sort of enforced mourning uh, that, that we have and like what that is for and what that does. And it is a thing that is for a purpose it is to make us feel a connection and stuff the same way they don't have second names. So we have to use their titles regardless of if you're, you know, a Republican or not. Like it, all those sort of things were kind of going in my head while seeing the news about, you know, this man that passed away. Uh, and also kind of the, that, you know, we are all feeling it like lockdown has been so intense and so many people have lost so much, not just loved ones, but time and opportunity and, you know, education and all these things to be so sad for a man who lived hugely privileged and incredibly long life like sad for his family but not necessarily sad for a country and so I decided to choose for my piece of text a song that I hate which is uh, God Save the Queen because (laughs) to be a national anthem devoted to an individual is a thing I find wholly abhorrent Uh, it's nonsensical and so this is uh, my poem God save the queen. It must be odd to believe you are chosen by God, that you have been given crown and orb, and in Christ's name sent forth to save. It would seem insane to resist power when a nation is yours and not ours, but it is our belief that is the basis of that power. So you are forced to be gracious, to placatas to give no reason for guillotine assisted removal of queen status quo only lasts as long as the people's patience so live be quiet avoid the tempting and salacious pay attention to the history of our closest and most noble neighbors performing their own tightrope routine before falling from favor one day a queen The next, a despot dictator, no longer chosen by God, but reviled in the papers. 
save yourself by not ruffling any feathers, be the always serene, preferably unseen queen above such mortal matters. Send ministers, bishops, and other sycophantic flatterers when Her Majesty's family's calamities come after her, so she reigns victorious while historians write erroneously about happy serfs in their much-loved monarchy and pay no mind to Republican anarchy, censorious insanity meant to muddy this nation's name so glorious to laboriously replace grace and song with modern vulgarity was the plan all along. Morality gone. It's your strength that'll pull them through. You they'll be looking to, so hold on to the rain strain against change over and over allow no cracks in your composure no alternative for us and when you so close to god are gone and turned to dust i hope he asks what did you say your gormless gaze and startled silence so obscene the only fitting end for our gracious noble queen Oh my god! Aim. That's the song for the revolution. I fucking love it. Sorry, swearing. I'm so excited. Oh good, because I had one. Fuck you, Kev. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just to reiterate, nothing against individuals. I hold on no ill will to, to a wee old lady who has lived her life, but like the monarchy is a ridiculous thing, in my opinion. In my opinion. If you yeah, have a different absolutely. one, go I, write I your think... pro you know, whatever poem, but for me, <laughs> nah. I, I think one of the most interesting things about it, and, and we spent a little bit of time talking about this over the week um, when I was writing My Golden Shovel as well, is all of the different possibilities for what you can do with the form, right? So um, what Mark has done is taken a poem that he loves and has, you know, twisted it, has, uh, you know, set it in a different context, has used Greek mythology, um, what Kev has done here is taken a song that he hates and rebutted it and, and you know, added this, um, not even added context, but added perspective, right? And, and that's sort of a similar thing to what I did in, in my Golden Shovel earlier this week, where I took a Percy Shelley poem and was like, you're not nice to women and I'm going to call you out on it. Um, so, so it's really interesting to me, this notion of the golden shovel as praise, as expansion, but also as shifting of perspective and maybe as rebuttal and criticism. Um, yeah, Bex, I'm, I'm curious your, your reaction. It, it was funny watching your face during the poem and you just started really going off at a certain point. Yeah, could you, yeah, what did you? Yeah, well, one of the things I really love in terms of like music in general is I really love rap music, even though I'm very white, I understand. But I really like because I like words. I like assonance and rhythm and other things that are word related I'm a poet um but I really like like the rhythm that Kev always gets and like the use of certain words that you would only really expect to be used by that upper class toffee whatever kind of example in a way kind of taken ownership of those words to reinvent the statement yeah that was not very profound <laughs> No, 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 but it, it's that twisting of vocabulary. It's it's reclaiming vocabulary. Um, yeah, because Kev, I know like there there were so many repeated words throughout that, you know, God save the queen, God save our gracious queen. You know, how many times does God and queen appear? And so was that sort of a challenge for you in going through it and trying to figure out how to use those repeating words? Dude, totally, uh, like, I mean, <laughs> rhyming dictionaries are your friend. Uh, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't think it's bad to, like, not everyone has a limitless vocabulary stored in their head and a brain like Will Nami's that can, you know, find those rhyming phrases immediately. Like, I just, it doesn't exist for me. So, like, I used a lot of rhyming dictionary and, like, I wanted to deliberately use um, a vocabulary for, for certain bits. Like, I use uh, erroneously, uh, laboriously, and stuff like that. I wanted to, to use words that are smart refined you know like the big <laughs> words like, that i don't use in my big my normal words. um conversation because i want you to like i want you to be like this is one thing i think i do quite nicely in that poem is i think i sh i show without going and now it's them saying a bit i switch from me speaking to kind of their inner monologue and back and that's a hard thing to do and i think using a very different vocabulary when i'm in their monologue 
like or making fun of them right it's like going oh this is what you would say about that though isn't it and you're like because you're using stupid words that aren't helpful <laughs> yeah it's yeah because mark you sort of did it was interesting because you you were saying earlier how you shifted josh's over i was about to say josh's over language josh overton's language uh <laughs> to, <laughs> i'm doing a bit of it myself uh to like you took the word here and in the ending in the original poem and made it ethereal so it, yeah how much uh was that uh, strategy present for you, Kev? Did you change any of the I, original language? I misunderstood how golden shovels work, Katie. And I thought <laughs> uh, every line had to literally end, like your beat, your, your breath had to end on the last word. And so I made it much more difficult for myself and haven't done any of those fun little like, oh, but this <laughs> word's actually split over to, nope, just very painfully put together, unfortunately. Kevin, additional challenges, McLean. <laughs> not bright, not bright. <laughs> I mean, you say not bright, but then you're going like, but then you've come out with that piece, which I think is, is a is a fantastic piece of reflection into it. And then, but it goes back to what you said, you were sort of saying about your strategy for coming up with it, is you had an idea about what you wanted to do and you made the, like, you used, you used the restriction to your advantage yeah. rather than, like kind of what I ended up doing, the mistake I made up doing was that became my disadvantage. You went, you had an idea and used, found the perfect piece to go with it. And just on like the performance part, yeah, but it's like what Beck said, there was particular bits where I'm like, cause I also love your particular voice for certain words and sounds. And you get a really nice sound and essence when you get a good rhythm going. And I'm just like, yes, yes, keep going. It's so important to my work, like rhyme and assonance, all my poetry rhymes, whether it's like strict A, B, E, A, you know, whatever structure is irrelevant, there are, there's constant rhyming. And I didn't, I, I form frightens me because sometimes it takes away your ability to, to, use mm -hmm. your flow in rhyme and I want you desperately to keep that and I found a trick if anyone is like no I need to write in rhyme is like write each line backwards so like because you can't make the ends rhyme right it all needs to be internal so what I would try and do is use so if the end line is queen then the first half of the next line has to have an in sound and then just after it there needs to be a sound that sets up the new end word yeah and so i would start with the new end word and the old end word and like try and write them backwards to meet in the middle if you know what i mean it sounds mm -hmm. mental but like that was my strategy and it helped me keep this you know kind of constant flowing rhyme where it did but it didn't matter what the end words were it's almost like circular chain rhyming yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than focusing on sort of just those end words because obviously in a golden shovel you don't have control over them you have to sort of think outside the linear structure of the poem to get those internal rhyme structures which is how you end up with something that sounds more rappy because you know people that do yeah. rap are so much more like aware of the variety of rhyme structure like i think a lot of formal poetry gets tied into specific rhyme structures whereas you know people that are doing rap are like innovative as want. hell like they're, they're, <laughs> you know so like you get that sound that is just you know it's just rhyming it's poetry rhythm and poetry rap uh you know what i mean so it's it's like little difference well what a stunning piece like oof can, can we replace uh, Shelley's Mask of Anarchy with that? Because we've sure. established that Shelley is awful. So. Sure, no worries. Sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have one, one golden shovel left. Madame Me. Sherwood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I've been kind of saying before, I didn't use a poem. I didn't use a song. I didn't use original. I didn't really use like published text. Um, I had a bad week this week. Some events happened on Wednesday. It kind of threw me through a loop. And as life happens to all writers and all creatives, sometimes you get that creative block and it's very difficult to kind of get out of it. I was trying to write different things, but nothing felt, because I, I kind of felt like I didn't really want to write about the topic, but I didn't want to disrespect the topic by not writing about it. So I found myself in like a weird middle ground and I was just getting very stressed out about the whole thing and everything that was going on. And I just kind of went, man, I wish... I just had a bit of forewarning. Like, I just wish that I knew that this was coming, something to have braced myself with. And then I thought, well, I would have got a bit of forewarning had I bothered to read my horoscope on that day. Um, so I have written 
my piece here is called An Honest Horoscope. Uh, I will read the original horoscope that I have been I was given for Wednesday, and then I will read my expanded horoscope. And I may be the first person to have ever used a horoscope for a golden shovel, but it's really good. And everyone gets something different that they can make relate to their day. Anyway, so my horoscope for Wednesday was, you've been doing some powerful inner work, Libra. Bit by bit, you've been stripping away any falsehoods that obscure your needs in your love life. Wednesday's skies work to brighten the mood and help reestablish your faith in this process as the progressive Aquarius moon merges with optimistic Jupiter. Um, I didn't write all of it, but I have got, you know, there's some more stuff about lunar dips and Pisces directing attention and whatever. Um, but I just thought, I mean, that didn't really give me any help. So I've written a kind of retrospective horoscope about um, Wednesday. So this is my honest horoscope. Help yourself, all right? Give yourself a break. You've had a few, a busy few months and the world has been basically exploding outside the door. So maybe doing nothing in this moment is more meaningful than constantly doing something all the time. We know you feel that being a successful in career is a powerful statement. Some fuck you to ancient societies who said she must not. Those inner cogs clanging together, spinning the wheels. That, and with that power, you create more work. Typical Libra. Loosen up, or the grasp you hold so tight will break everything bit by bit. You'll see something today. And while you've heard it before, the story still bears the same hurt. What might have been but never was, the new replacing the old, stripping the illusion born of rose-tinted time away. It's time to let go, Libra. Brush aside the pains of guilt, any wild false, uh, fantastical claims made from your own self-doubt and falsehoods and look closely and deeply into the truth and know that the past experience can only obscure a direct path to exception if you allow it. Your wretched gut will be untwisted with time, needs must after all. We've seen enough days like this to last a lifetime. In time, you can sit with your lonely, feel sad about past love and sit with the weight of life. Sorry, we know you really hate Wednesdays. Just take a breath, all right? Keep that gray in the sky. Step forward to make tomorrow a brighter day. There is always work to do. So maybe just for a little while, just for a bit, just for today, take some time to help your own shine brighten. Thanks. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, wow. Thanks. That's so what? clever. Oh. Yeah. That's very 26 clever. source materials later, and I settled on astrology.com. <laughs> but that's such a inch like that is James is such an interesting and creative thought. Like, on, like, I didn't think of anything outside of the poem, so like, obviously, my expansion wasn't, but even within that, like, with the sort of the revelation of going through it, going like, and weirdly, it's it seems like such a perfect fit for that as well because it's like, I'm so I'm, I'm obviously sorry to hear about the circumstances yeah. surrounding it, yeah, but, of course, but. It's a very art, creative and artist, uh, artistic way to use it around. I'm just like, I was always uh, told horoscopes are right if you read between the lines. So I just added loads of lines. I was going to say, there's <laughs> a thing to that as well. Is that it's, that's your inter the interpretation of the horoscope is always then, you know, the yeah. broad thing around it. Very when clever. you're talking about more helpful horoscopes, a blank page would have been more helpful then. <laughs> but, uh, I think, I think like it's such a good, because that idea, like you sum it up so well, right, in terms of going like fit it to your theme like what's the thing you're thinking i wish i could see into the future so take a thing that says it can do that for you but you know it can't but that doesn't yeah. take the want away so you fix it that's like it yeah that, that's so thematically nice and yeah. then on top of it the writing is spectacular Bex. like I, I just your ability to write so conversationally and make it feel so like naturally spoken while like underneath it is so honed and particular and specific is is something that i all my poems sound like poems <laughs> and yours sound like thoughts which is a totally different uh yeah ball of wax it, it's that metaphor isn't it of of you know you look at an embroidery hoop and on the front it's just you know gorgeous and everything looks neat and in its place and then you look at the back and it's like Bull! there's yeah. the skeleton behind that you know as a fellow writer i know that it the hardest thing is to make something look natural and to make it sound conversational particularly with a, a piece of writing in form like a golden shovel where so many elements of this poem are out with your control you know you have to use these words and i think 
it's it's a it's an absolute skill with golden shovels that I think all of you absolutely smashed was to make the original poem sort of vanish under it um, to make it not sound like you you can't pick out which bits of those are in the original text aside from like Libra. <laughs> like, well, I added know? that in a couple of times just when it's not in the text. Just oh, really? To... Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. I, I did <laughs> the same brilliant. with like Queen and stuff, like threw yeah. in words that you know in other places to make the flow a bit nicer. Yeah. Yes. And and so, yeah, I think you all absolutely smashed this with totally different, you know, conceptual <laughs> pieces. And yeah. I'm going to sew cool. my golden shovel badge onto my sash. <laughs> Poetry with a scouts, to... I'm in. Poetry, sc Poetry oh scouts. Oh my god! Oh no, now I have even more work to do. Typical <laughs> Libra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, guys, any final thoughts on the Golden Shovel? Will you be doing this again when no. not forced? No. No. <laughs> Standing up from the door that's broken my nose and I'm going to try another one. <laughs> concrete, uh, concrete, I thought I would hate and it turned out I really liked and I'm probably going to do more stuff with concrete. Golden Shovel, I thought, piece of piss, that's totally up my alley. <laughs> and I cried for a week, so no. Yeah, I do. I do. I think I might do a golden. I don't think I would ever sit down again with the intention of writing a golden shovel. But I think if something happened, occurred naturally, you know, maybe I need to do all of the zodiac signs to do uh, poetry for astrologers or so. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> then maybe I would do it in those situations. But I think there was a lot of pieces that I examined that could have been golden shovels and there's always a million different options. I'm actually really looking forward to having a more strict structure so that I could look at it and be like, by definition, this is a correct poem. It is, yeah, it's sort of the the infinity of options can make it harder. Yeah, Mark, what, do you, what are your thoughts? No more golden shovels? I, I don't want to go as far as to completely disregard the form. Obviously, I, I, was, I had a lot of thoughts um with concrete i again thought that was going to be a lot harder and then admittedly the start of golden shovel week was mostly me going how could i get a bunch of anime things working on the thing that kev suggested last yeah. week i really wanted to do something with that but i was like oh, i've got to do the golden shovel so it was off to a bad start for it before it, i would probably leave it a while but there's definitely a lot of lessons here that i've gone it's not the form's fault that i'm not smart <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Bex is bang on when she says right it's the thing of like I, I think it's a good tool to have mm -hmm. in the kit like for an example like that like that gave you know once that finally came to me that was great right it's mm -hmm. happening now it's a topical thing I really struggle to write topically like I find it difficult I want to reflect and this is a good way to kind of like go no here's a, a, a skeleton to do it to but I think it would be something that would have to be like pop in my head oh that's a great i could you you know i don't think i'll pursue being like i would like to do a golden shovel because i don't think that's the best way <laughs> yeah it, it was funny for me actually because the first golden shovel i ever wrote was last naparaimo and i i didn't sort of force myself to do it i went oh this is a cool new form maybe i'll play with it and had the amazing and incredibly rare experience of it just sort of popping out in the water um and so because I'd had that wonderful experience last year, I was like, yeah, I'm so excited. And, you know, it should be not easy, but, you know, it won't take me that long. And so with my Shelley poem, I, I sort of went in with that expectation and it took me the full week and so much work and so much wrangling to make it happen. And so it is funny, you know, you can have, you know, one experience writing in a poetic form one time and then a totally different experience another time. So... I'll yeah. jump in there and throw out that if you haven't seen Katie's Shelley poem that she did her golden shovel this week, uh, the host of each week, midweek before their episode, they release uh, a little video. Uh, Bex obviously did the first week with her uh, awesome concrete poem. Katie was up this week and she put out a uh, sort of spectacular golden shovel, really nicely filmed and stuff. So do go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll you'll you won't miss them. It's ideal. Yay! And what that means is that for next week, we have a fantastic sonnet to look forward to from Mr. Mark Galley. You do, you do. <laughs> Who's clearly very excited. Everyone, how are you feeling about Sonnet Week? Kev, are you excited for Sonnet Week? I thought Golden Shovel was gonna be easy, so now I don't think anything. <laughs> uh, Bex, how about you? Sonnet? Yep, can't Congrats. wait, can't wait. Restrictions, Great. limitations, please don't let me look at 27 sausages <laughs> materials again. Oh, Mark, do you want to, since you are going to mm -hmm. be taking over hosting duties for next week uh, and we will be looking at the Shakespearean sonnet, do you yes. want to explain to our lovely audience what a Shakespearean sonnet is? 
I will do an attempt. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess <laughs> with Shakespearean sonnet, you really have to look at, well, I mean, the four main components of the Shakespearean oh. sonnet. That I suppose oh. the first one, first one being the length. I mean, all Shakespearean sonnets have to be 14 lines long. Um, the second component being the rhyme structure. It has a very particular rhyme structure. Um, what is that particular rhyme structure? <laughs> is uh, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, and then G, uh, G, G. Uh, the 14 lines are, of course, G, G, split indeed. G, G. The four lines split into four quadrains, I believe is the term, and then finishes three. with a final couplet. Oh, three um, quadrains, one final couplet. Is that a quad quadrain? Yeah. I knew, I, th I thought I was going to get that. Wrong. But so those are the two uh, two main elements. It's quite nice that you can break them down. The third and the one I think I'm probably going to struggle with the most uh, being the, the meter. The, it has to be in iambic pentameter, um, which I think we're going to get a good example of later on. My notes for iambic pentameter just go da 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 etc. What the fuck is a quatrain? <laughs> four, four. So it's it's, a, it's three. It's so it's like three <laughs> stanzas of four lines long, and then uh, two lines at the end. So like four, eight, 12, and then the final bringing you to the 14. Um, and then I believe the fourth component, although this is the probably more open to artistic interpretations, that the, typically they will end, that last couplet will end with what is known as a volta or a, you know, a sort of a twist or a shift in, in whatever you're doing. I believe, I believe it was Dr. Katie Ailes that said, if you were describing your sonnet about a battle, for example, the, the last uh, section, your volta, may be then be that the battle ends and there is peace. Um, so, I mean, I'm it's so, I'm so proud of you. Uh, I'm so scared. I don't know if that, I, you know, I don't know if that helps anyone. Katie, so is that <laughs> accurate? Is that close? Is that, that, that was beautiful. If I could give you an honorary doctorate, I would. Um, that was well, well done. That, that's literally it. Yeah, those are the four mm. components of the Shakespearean sonnet. Yep. And close those uh, if, notes now. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> if, if you want that exact same information in an American accent, you can watch my workshop on the Shakespearean sonnet. But yeah, Mark, Mark got it exactly. It's a 14 line poem with a strict uh, rhyme scheme and meter, and it tends to have a volta near the end, which just means a turn in meaning. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have fun next week. I'm I'm slightly terrified. I hate writing an iambic pentameter. Um, but we're gonna get through it together. We're gonna get through it together. Has anyone already started writing theirs or? Ooh. Well, my, my mine comes out because obviously we, when we record these are obviously a bit later for for the the hosts videos. So because my because uh, the sonnet is coming out a little bit earlier, I, um, I imagine Bex and Kate, you were maybe the same of having to be a little bit ahead of the, you know, like the the curve. Uh, Kev just realizing Kev just he's going to have to get to do he's going to have to yeah. do a thing with less time down the line. Um, it's a univocal. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> I can't tell whether that's a scream of joy or it's not patient anymore and that that worries me. Um oh my gosh. So for 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 Sonnet Week, um we wanted to give an example because at the end of every episode we give an example of the poem that uh the poetic form that we're going to be using next week. And so we thought that we would share a piece by one of all of our favorite poets, the incredible Mancunian poet, Tony Walsh. Uh, Tony is just a stunning, stunning writer, incredible performer, and just one of the loveliest people that you'll meet. Um, and he was messaging me a bit uh, during Return to Form and sharing some of his work in form. Um, and uh, he sent me this poem and Bex uh, recently found it as well. We both were talking about how it's such an incredible piece and sort of the perfect poem to slide into our sonnet week with. So um, huge thanks to Tony. I believe this is published in his book by Burning Eye Books. Yes. Oh, uh, what? It's ooh. so beautiful. Wow. <laughs> books. Please do pick up your copy of that. Uh, you can follow Tony on Twitter. We will post links to where to find him um, in the description below. Oh, so excited. This poem is called Sonnet Boom. They told me I should use a classic form to prove that I'm a master of my craft. A sonnet would go down a fucking storm. A sonnet? Me? You're joking, don't be daft. They said that as a poet versed in rhyme, a sonnet would be well within my reach. 
They said that I should allocate the time to learn the form and all it has to teach. So then they showed me how a sonnet goes in 14 lines, three fours, and then a two. And then they stressed about iambic flows, pentameter of 10 beats, five times two. They said the final twist is sure to come. De-dum, 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 de-dum. Yes. I love it so much. Oh, yep. <laughs> Tony, thank example. you. What a poem. Um, so yeah, if you're curious how to write a sonnet, um, read that poem. Or do our workshop that we have available on our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and get all of the tips that I've been making and Katie's doing and all of those things. Mm. You know, sorry, I just jumped in and you plugs there. Uh, that about sums it up. Yeah. Uh, so as we as we wrap up this episode, and um, thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it all the way through this episode with all of the Greek illusions and uh, patriotic love of nation, I, I was trying to twist that and make it a thing about how your nope. poem is patriotic because it's actually about democracy. But I failed. Patriotism, <laughs> stupid. Why would you be patriotic? Nonsense. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> See this episode with the Greek illusions and Kev being a staunch Republican and Bex taking horoscopes to a whole new level. Um, thank you so much, guys. We genuinely really appreciate everyone taking part in this month. Um, please, as I was saying earlier, do share your work with us. Join in this fantastic community of writers. If you are writing this month, please tag us in it. We would love to share it on socials and maybe even in an upcoming episode of the Na podcast. It uh, doesn't matter what kind of form you're writing. Uh, we, just, we just love poems, y'all. We just love poems. Um, if you want to do something more to support us, uh, we do have a Patreon and producing Naparimo, sending out all of these tips, doing this recording and editing it and closed captioning and all of that. It does take a fair bit of work. Um, we are artists uh we also love food so if you want to support the work that we do within the scottish spoken word scene and um sort of film and production scene more broadly um it would be incredible if you dropped some money in the patreon uh pledge to support us and then that allows us to keep doing what we do plus you get some awesome stuff out of it so definitely worth your while um yeah follow us on social media we're sharing lots of tips and all of these joyous things and get ready to write some sonnets. Kev, is there anything else that we need to plug? Any more jazz? No. <laughs> Great. I love it when Kev's happy. All right, guys. Are we ready to say our goodbye? I'm going to do a countdown. I, th I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we will see you next week. Thank you for joining in the podcast. Three, two, one. Good Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, we'd appreciate it if you could hit the like button, if you could hit the subscribe button, and make sure to ring that bell icon so you don't miss any updates from us in the future. If you want to go that extra mile and support us a little further, we do have a Patreon channel with loads of exclusive goodies, and you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. We appreciate your help, guys, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.